Hello there, I am Dr. Sherbanu, Associate Professor in the Malay Studies Department at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. My presentation today is about two classes I conducted based on a Level 4 module I teach at the Malay Studies Department entitled Orientations in Muslim Resurgence Movements. The mission of FASS and Malay Studies is to nurture transformative agents who engage our community with cutting-edge ideas. In line with this mission, my module allows students to explore issues of concern within the Muslim community in Singapore in the context of a global religious resurgence and to think of possible actions to address them. Students explore topics such as interfaith relations, Islam in popular culture, Islamic consumption, women in Islam, Islamophobia and extremism, amongst others. In my classes, I help to develop my students' critical faculties by interrogating dominant narratives that insist on homogenizing Muslims. I probe my students to understand and question the over-generalised portrayals and misperceptions of Muslims in the general public narrative, media and academia. Is Islam a backward religion that cannot be reconciled with secularity and modernity? Is there a clash of civilization that pitch Islam against the West? Is violent jihad inherent in Islam? Are Muslim women subordinated to men? Is there such a thing as Muslim exceptionalism and distinction that Muslims cannot integrate with other races? In this masterclass, I present two major issues that my students chose to interrogate for their end of the term class projects. This final class project is a 15 minutes YouTube video. As a follow up of the weekly class sessions, students are allowed to choose a topic that interests them. And we work together to explore research questions and the method of investigation. Students then analyse findings and think of a possible action that could be taken to address the issue. Students work in teams of two and this helps them to engage in cooperative learning based on problem solving. Besides the critical examination of issues, another major aim of the project is to explore issues close to students' hearts. I want to make students care enough for the subject matter to undertake a social and moral action, even if it is at the individual level, so that this could have an impact on the community. In other words, to have a business school brain and a social worker's heart. Islamic resurgence or the rising again of Islam is a description that refers to the re-establishment of Islamic values, practices, institutions, laws in the lives of Muslims everywhere. As Chandra Muzaffar mentions, it is an attempt to recreate an Islamic ethos and social order guided by the Quran and the Sunnah. And the signs of Islamic resurgence can be seen everywhere. In the advent of Islamic resurgence, the rise of Islamic consciousness can also be seen from food consumption. Today, there is a much more attention given to what is considered halal and the commitment to producing and consuming halal food. According to Fisher, halal is an Arabic word that literally means permissible, all lawful, and conventionally halal signifies pure food, particularly in relation to meat, subject to proper Islamic practice such as ritual slaughter and pork avoidance. We decided to interview a few undergraduate students and stall owners to capture the essence of their understanding of halal and how they go about negotiating and legitimizing both their consumption and production respectively. In the wake of Dakwa, the domain of food in particular has been increasingly subjected to the Islamic understanding of halal. 
Since we have established earlier the varying degree of understanding, here we shall see how some Muslims encounter and respond to others when consuming halal food is concerned. In our opinion, halal has undergone many interpretations and understanding that there is no one definition to it. It is dynamic in its meaning and varies according to the context. This can be seen in the various perception of halal logos and the way Muslims and non-Muslims react and negotiate with one another. So, what does halal mean for you? Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to the special episode of the Muslim Monologue. You're here with me, Atika Hakim, and in this episode, we'll be exploring the resurgence of extremist ideas in the Malay community. From the monologues we've seen earlier, we can see the diversities in the Muslim lives in the Singapore context at least. These ideas are influenced by our own local cultures and also global phenomena. The life of the Smith Singapore Muslim are coloured by practices such as maulid and also exciting Hari Raya traditions. The Muslims are also living in a multicultural society where we experience the hybridity of cultures and share common spaces and also build relationships with people from different religions. But in light of the current researches of Islamic ideas, diversity seems to be challenged by many hegemonic forces. There are factions within our community which are pushing for Islamic ideas that makes living as a Muslim difficult, exclusive, and incompatible to the modern society. We refer to these ideas as extremist ideas. Perhaps we have to relook at our own approach in understanding our religion. We should be willing to learn and relearn how we understand Islam and appreciate its diversity. Together, I believe that we can make Islam beautiful again in the eyes of the world. In the first video, the students examine the concept of halal or what is permissible in Islam in the context of food consumption by students and stallholders on our campus. They analysed the different meanings of permissibility and how this impacted common spaces between Muslims and non-Muslims. Students asked the following questions. What are the diverse understandings of Muslims and non-Muslims about halal? Why and how do these perceptions, stereotypes, misunderstandings arise? Are these due to a lack of information, knowledge and familiarity about Muslims? What can we do about this and what are the responsibilities of Muslims and non-Muslims alike to expand common spaces. In the second video, students were interested to understand the concept of extremism or extremist ideas as touted by some Muslims. In the video, students interrogated a few extremist ideas and explored how this can be combated to promote better interfaith relations. Students explored the following questions. What constitute extremist ideas? Why and how do these ideas arise and manifest in society? Are these due to Muslim actions themselves, albeit a minority? How do these ideas impact interfaith and intercommunity relations? How do we combat such ideas and what are the responsibilities of Muslims and non-Muslims alike? 
Unfortunately, because of time constraint, only short segments of each of the 15 minutes videos can be shown here. I would like to end my presentation with my own reflections and a student's feedback. Students learn that Muslims, just like other faith groups, are diverse and complex and should be understood within their own particular socio-political contexts. Answers and solutions do not come easily. However, equipped with the necessary critical skills to assess problems in a more nuanced and balanced manner, and an empathetic attitude to appreciate the complexities at hand, a small step towards tackling a problem could indeed go a long way. I too have learned and benefited from my students in my own learning journey. I leave you with my students' feedback on the module. Thank you, and I look forward to you joining FASS and Malay Studies. Stay safe and keep well.